Good evening. I'm one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church in Champaign. My, Matt, my name is Matt Matthews. Um, for several years, we've had the privilege of doing worship with our brothers and sisters right over there at First United Methodist Church across State Street. And I'm glad to be with you as you all worship and we worship together. Reverend Julia Melgreen will uh, preach our sermon today. I'm uh, blessed to do this introduction. Um, and we're going to mash up bits and pieces of our services of worship on this Good Friday. Um, thanks to the coronavirus worldwide pandemic, we're having to relearn what it means to be the church of Jesus Christ without walls. We are learning what it's like to be a part of the healing touch the healing human touch, without actually touching, without shaking hands, without bumping fists, without touching elbows. We're learning again what it means to see one another while keeping social or physical distance. We're learning how to see one another differently from afar or through the wires of the telephone or through the magic of Zoom or Skype or Facebook. 
We're relearning what it means to be the church of Jesus Christ without walls. One of the things I have relearned, and I needed to relearn it because I knew it, but I didn't know it, is that God is with us in powerful ways right now, helping us to be the church beyond our wildest imaginations. On Good Friday, we come not to celebrate the cross. There's nothing at all to celebrate about the cross. But we come to commemorate it, to remember what happened here. We've been on a Lenten journey that began in a wilderness place of desolation, a desert wilderness, that led us through towns and villages. It led us to sheltering in place orders. It led us to our homes. It led us to to dusting the tops of the bookshelves and and the difficulty of working from home where our home is no longer a castle but a workplace, a play place, a classroom. The Lenten journey has led us to many places. Sunday last, it led us to worship where we spread out the cloaks on the road in front of Jesus on that donkey. And we we shook in the air, um, palmed, and we shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that journey has led us last night to this table where we celebrated communion. Monday, Thursday, the day of a new commandment, a new mandate, mandatum. And tonight, Good Friday. A few days from now, we'll be gathering at the empty tomb, discovering the tomb is empty, the the air heavy with the smell of spices. We'll say alleluia and we'll join with the church eternal as we celebrate resurrection, but not yet. Before we go there, we are here at a place they call the skull, at a place where Jesus has been betrayed, lugged across up that hill, was crucified, and he did die. We don't rush to the resurrection. We want to. We want to go there to our Easter dresses and our Easter candy and maybe a brunch somewhere in town. But we don't rush to that place. We stay here while we're here. And we, we see and we wonder what gifts God has given us to be opened in this time, in this place, on this dark night where Jesus was like a great tear on that black night. There are gifts for us to receive tonight, now. So we pause, and tonight we listen. The pastor that I loved when I was growing up as a child and as an adolescent, the pastor of my church when I went away to seminary, Louis V. Andrews, whose wife died just two weeks ago, He wrote a beautiful thing that I will use tonight as our invitation to listening, as our invitation into silence. Listen to the donkey clop into Jerusalem with the king on its back. Listen to the teacher teach and the crowd scratch their heads. Listen to the disciples argue, jockeying for position. Listen to the meal being shared in the upper room. Listen to the disciples snore. Listen to Jesus pray. Listen to the followers run away. Listen to the courtyard fire crackle as Peter rubs his hands over it. Listen to the rooster crow. Listen to the mob shout. Do you hear your voice in that cacophony? Listen to Pilate bargain. Listen to Pilate's wife plead. Listen to the whip crack. Listen to the hammer ring. Listen to the dice click. Listen to the dying cry. Listen to the heart of God Almighty break in two. Listen and let us worship God. Our first hymn is O Sacred Head Now Wounded. When you see the screen, 
appear with the words. Please sing with us. Pastor Eric will lead our prayer. Beloved people of God, as Jesus stretched out his arms on the cross to offer life and salvation to all, let us pray for the world that God loves so much. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. Let us pray for this presbytery and congregation. Almighty and eternal God, your Spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold pastors and other leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. Help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. Let us pray for people of other faiths.
Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful in our witness to the love made known to us in your Son. Let us pray for those who cannot believe. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all might long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians, and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold this world in the arms of your care. Heal the damage we have done and bring all things to fulfillment in you. Let us pray for the leaders and peoples of all nations. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and the oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. Let us pray for our world in a time of pandemic. Almighty and eternal God, look with compassion upon your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick, give strength to those who care for them, welcome into your peace those who have died, and throughout this time, Grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love. Let us pray for all who suffer or are in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn is Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
I take across thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by, to know no gain or loss. My sinful self, my only shame, my glory all the cross. Hi, my name is Julia Melgreen and I serve as the pastor at First United Methodist Church and I am glad that we have this opportunity to put our worship together and to share this time with our friends at First Pres. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Mark chapter 15 verses 33 through 38. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi. Lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his, la breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. Will you pray with me? We invite you, Lord God, to enter into this space of worship, this time of togetherness. We ask that you would bless us with an understanding of your presence, your will and your way. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us for the hours ahead. Give to us courage to move into this unknown future. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. At our church, we've been using Zoom to hold virtual meetings. I'm sure you have probably been doing something like that. I know there are other platforms out there for these online meetings. I think by now you have seen what these look like, a screen full of little bitty faces. <laughs> In an article published by the Harvard Business Review on March 23rd, they were describing just such a virtual meeting. They began their meeting, as we do during this pandemic, by checking in with each other. How are you doing? One woman mentioned that she was feeling grief. Heads started nodding across the screen, each of them in their respective frames. Grief. That's not a normal topic for an editorial meeting. Hoping that if they could name it, they could manage it, they turned to David Kessler, a grief expert. And you might know him as the co-author with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross on grief and grieving, finding the meaning of grief through five stages of loss. His new book adds another stage to the process, Finding Meaning, the sixth stage of grief. He is the founder of www.grief.com. He is an expert on grief. The Harvard Business Review people posed this question. People are feeling any number of things right now. Is it right to call some of what they're feeling grief? And he responded, yes. And we're feeling a number of different griefs. We feel the world has changed, and it has. We know this is temporary, but it doesn't feel that way. And we realize things will be different. Just as going to the airport is forever different now from how it was before 9-11, things will change. And this is the point at which they changed. The loss of normalcy, the fear of economic toll, the loss of connection. 
This is hitting us, and we're grieving. Collectively, we are not used to this kind of collective grief in the air. I'm going to tell you a true thing. I am a Christian. I have been a Christian all my life, raised in a Christian family. I am the resident theologian, the pastor, the spiritual leader of a congregation. I know a lot about the Bible and Christianity. I know God is the answer. I know God is able. I know that our biblical narrative always leads to victory. God is triumphant. I know all that. And still, I have been laid low by grief in these last weeks. I have been swamped by grief from time to time. Some days it's been all day, some days it's just been for a while. I have been feeling all the feelings. One day last week, I went to the church to pick up some books I needed and I walked through our building and I burst into tears. The fellowship area where we talk and have coffee has been empty for three weeks and I miss our people. I walked into the sanctuary and the tears continued. The online worship that we're doing, I'm glad we have the option in this time to still read the word of God, sing praise to God, and gather virtually. But the sanctuary, I could imagine the faces and where people usually sit. I could remember the energy of the people gathered. Can I just say the body of Christ gathered together is precious. If we didn't know that before, I hope we know it now. It is beautiful, powerful, life-giving, and it is just not the same from home on a, living, on a screen in the living room. Like you, I read the news and I'm gut punched. Cities looking to rent ice rinks to use as impromptu morgues. People admitted to hospitals and family members barred from visiting. God bless the nurses who are compassionate and helping people die. But when my time comes, no matter how wonderful the nurse is, I want my husband by my side, holding my hand and whispering words of love and encouragement into my ear. And then after death, funerals are being postponed or done via an online service. The usual gathering of loved ones and friends to carry us through is gone. The hugs, the knee pats, the arms draped around our shoulders, the physical comfort of people speaking to our grief is absent. Our children are sad, they're grieving too. They miss their friends, they're missing their year-end special celebrations, state sporting events, all sporting events, any team sports, graduations, promotions, honor ceremonies, proms, eighth grade dances, gone. People are losing their jobs. Healthcare workers and other essential workers are bravely going to work at great risk to themselves. Single adults are living in deep isolation. We are swamped with grief and we are putting on a brave face. We are well-trained to power through and to press on, and we will. We will make it through to the other side of this, and our faith in God will be a large part of how we make it through to the other side. But things will not be the way they were. Good Friday feels like an invitation to feel all the feelings, especially grief. I feel like Today, of all days, we can stop pretending everything is okay and we can just be deeply sad. Today, we don't have to power through. We don't have to put a positive spin on anything. We don't have to look for a silver lining or see that the glass is half full. On the day we remember Jesus' crucifixion, it seems like we can just be sad together. We can have permission to grieve. For crying out loud, even Jesus cried out to God in his anguish, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And you know what? Jesus gets to feel all his feelings too. If hanging naked on a cross, suffering pain and fear and impending death makes him feel abandoned by God, then that's how he feels. Perhaps it is a good spiritual exercise tonight to step into grief and just stay there for a while. To examine our own losses, fears, and sadness, yes. But to pull the circle wider and witness the many ways we continue to break the heart of God. Perhaps today we can have the spiritual courage to look at the sin of the world, our own sin, and consider the part we are called to play in resisting the evil forces of this world. Systems of economic injustice and oppression that perpetuate poverty 
our ongoing proclivity toward violence, our willingness to protect our position of privilege and power at the expense of people of color, women, the LGBTQ community, and children. It seems like grief is a reasonable response to our inability or unwillingness to embrace and care for the people on the margins of our community and society. We were tasked by Jesus to love one another as he loved us. Much about our economic and political systems does not reflect radical love and compassionate care for all people long after the coronavirus is gone and baseball has resumed and we can go with our friends to our favorite restaurants. Beloved children of God will continue to suffer, struggle, and feel abandoned because we have refused to act, speak, or change. Perhaps grief is the first step toward change. Where in our world or our community do you see the sin and brokenness of humanity and feel grief that will last long after this pandemic is over? Tonight is not the night we see the world through rose-colored glasses. Tonight is not the night of rainbows and glitter. Tonight is not the night in which we focus on all the good in the world, and there is a lot of it. <laughs> Tonight we acknowledge that all is not well in our hearts, and all is not well in the world. Tonight is a night of grief and loss and fear. Psalm 6 describes grief like this. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I lay in bed, weeping and drenching my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. This psalm is one that boldly and faithfully steps into all the feelings and cries out to God. Not in denial of God, but in raw emotion and hope in God. When the psalmist was in the throes of grief, he turned not away from God, but toward God. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, O oh Lord? How long? That was his prayer. When Jesus felt lonely and afraid on the cross, he turned not away from God, but toward God and cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is a prayer. So tonight, we stand with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and feel her pain as she weeps at the foot of the cross and watches the life leave the broken body of her son. And with her and for her, we pray, my soul is in deep anguish. How long, O oh Lord? How long? The disciples who had staked all their hopes on their master and teacher now have nowhere to turn, no way to make sense of this new world without him. Their souls were in deep anguish. I'm sure they wondered, how long, O oh Lord? How long? We look at our world and we see our brothers and sisters and ourselves who suffer from all manner of harm, brokenness, and despair, and we pray with them and for them. Our souls are in deep anguish. How long, O oh Lord? How long? We are looking down a long road of separation, fear, and death as we live through this pandemic. And together we turn not away from God, but toward God and say in prayer, our souls are in deep anguish. How long, oh Lord, how long? Tonight, we feel all the feelings of grief, loss, and fear, and deep faith and abiding trust in the one who can bear our pain, hear our cries, and hold us together. God is the one who will see us through, and we join our voices in prayer. Our souls are in deep anguish. How long, O oh Lord? How long? Let us pray. Tonight, Lord God, we feel the pain 
of Jesus' death, the violence that was done toward him, and we grieve that violence is still such a part of this world. We feel the pain of his mother standing at the foot of the cross, and we grieve with all the parents who lose loved ones, who send loved ones into dangerous places. We gather together as the body of Christ, knowing that you can hear our pain, hear our anguish, and still come to us in love. How grateful we are to you, Lord God. Help us see us through. In Jesus' name, amen. O my people, O my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I led you out of slavery into freedom and delivered you through the waters of rebirth. But you have made a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Forty years I led you through the desert feeding you with manna on the way. I saved you from the time of trial and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have made a cross for your Savior, holy God. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud and fire, and you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I guided you by the light of the Holy Spirit, but you have made a cross for your Savior, O holy God. I planted you as my fairest vineyard and brought you and you brought forth bitter fruit. I made you branches of the vine and never left your side, but you have made a cross for your savior. Oh, holy God. I poured out saving water from the rock, 
but you gave me vinegar to drink. I poured out my life and gave you the new covenant in my blood, but you have made a cross for your Savior. Holy God. I gave you a royal scepter, but you gave me a crown of thorns. I gave you the kingdom and crowned you with eternal life, but you have made a cross for your Savior. Oh, holy God. I struck down your enemies, but you struck my head with a reed. I gave you my peace, but you draw the sword in my name, and you have made a cross for your Savior. Oh, holy God. I opened the waters to lead you to the promised land, but you opened my side with a spear. I washed your feet as a sign of my love, but you have made a cross for your Savior. Oh, holy God. I lifted, up you, I lifted you up to the heights, but you lifted me high on the cross. I raised you from the dead and prepared for you the tree of life, but you have made a cross for your Savior. Holy God. I grafted you into my people, but you have made them scapegoats of your own guilt. And you have made a cross for your Savior. Oh, holy God. I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And you have made a cross for your Savior. Oh, holy God. Holy God. Holy God. Tonight, after Joe leads us in our beautiful closing hymn we will leave in peace figuratively speaking from this place of worship we will not leave with a benediction or a blessing but we'll leave this night in silence as we remember the cross and prepare our hearts for Easter please sing the final hymn with us What wondrous love is this?
To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am while millions join the theme I will sing, I will sing while millions join the theme I will sing From cross I'm free I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful.